أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم I hope everybody is feeling good Excellent الحمد لله رب العالمين Today we completed the last two hizb in one surah from surah Mufsalat and Maybe a lot of us do not understand, but I'm here to remind myself first and foremost that we are the most blessed nation facing on this earth and below the sun. The nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the most beloved nation to Allah. There is no nation more beloved to him than that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's a reason behind that. There are many reasons behind it. But let's look at how Allah honored us. And what did he honor us with? For those of us who understand the honor of Allah, it is not something that can be replaced with anything. For those of us who know the reward of Allah, we know this reward cannot be given by anyone. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam is the most mentioned prophet in the Quran. And he is conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the revelation that Allah has given him. And he says, Oh Allah, I see that there is a nation in here that you mentioned that will come whom if they intend to do something bad, but they don't do it, they will get a reward for not doing it. And if they intend for doing something good and they don't do it, they will get the reward for having the good intention. And if they do it, they get double reward. Who is this nation? Allah tells him it is the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We look at the story of Musa. Allah Ta'ala punishes 600,000 of the troops of the Fir'aun all in one morning. And then he adds on to this that we are only going to allow the corpse of Fir'aun to be seen. So that every arrogant person after him knows that this is how they will wind up on the earth. And what's with us is even worse than that. But for those who take the ayat of Allah, who take the revelation of Allah and live and substantiate and stand upon the amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar, they will get the reward as if Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Just like when we are breaking our fast, that feeling that we get. Allah is telling us, you want to know how Musa felt talking to me? Break your fast and feel the feeling of the breaking of the fast. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam says, Oh Allah, I see that there is a nation here whomsoever eats with a bismillah and finishes with alhamdulillah in that circumstance, if they pass away, in other words, there is a piece of that food left in them and they pass away, they will be entered into Jannah. Who is that? It is the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Musa then says, oh Allah, make me among the nation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My people have rejected. The Banu Israel is the most deviant. You've sent them so many revelations, so many prophets, and they still reject. No matter how many signs, they still reject. But the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so fortunate. Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam wants to hit the ocean to close up after he gets through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وَاتْرُكُوهُ إِنَّا لَمُتْرَبُونَ Just leave it as it is, we will, we will close it back up. And then he says, فَمَا بَكَنْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَا كَانُوا مُنْذَرِينَ As far as the Fir'aun and his soldiers, when they left away like this, imagine those today who are most greedy over luxurious things and extravagant spending. When they leave the earth, their spoils are taken by their, you know, family members or government or state or whoever. Fir'aun's spoils were taken with him and he had no one to pray for him on the earth or in the heaven. All of his resources disappeared, even his empire was, after, was ended after that. Think about it. Who is a nation that is given this knowledge about those whom are people of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam's prophecy? Being the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who are we today? Are we the ones who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be proud of on the day of judgment? Think about it very carefully. For everything that we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a blessing in it as long as we do it with La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. They were not prayed for by the earth, what was on the earth, or what was in the heaven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be buried as far distant as where they were born and they are being made dua in that distance when we pass away. We're not like Fir'aun. We don't want to be like Fir'aun and no one is praying. Allah Ta'ala says that distance, that footsteps back and forth, however distant it is all for the believer. And it's also for the believer, wherever we put our head and, and pray and do the prostration, these places will make dua for us when we leave this earth. Think about it. We're not like the Fir'aun. We are the believers that Allah Ta'ala makes reference to when he says, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا وَسِحْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءَ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا The Malaika are making dua for us when we leave this earth for the good deeds that they were exchanging between them back and forth. They're sitting on our shoulders. We really want to know what belief is. Do we know what the decree is? The Father of Allah. You want to know what the belief is? Do you know? Do we know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in reference to the Quran, the revelation itself, and how it abrogates all other revelations? We want to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we have what it takes to meet the standards like we meet every day, every night in Ramadan? This is the true reward of Ramadan. And since we do not have the understanding of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really is, we do not know because we have not lived it or we do not know because it has not been clearly explained to us or for whatever reason we happen to be negligent we ask Allah Ta'ala to spare us from the questions of the grave but this is why Allah says Iqra, read Allah says Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq he was not telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go get involved in worldly matters he was a businessman he could have told him, go look into a certain area for a certain whatever. These are the business articles you need to go ahead and just stay in business. But no. When the revelation was sent to Rasulullah from that point on he knew his job, his plate was full. And he gave the da'wah. He called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
even the very small numbers of believers, plying day in, day out, how they would liberate themselves from the shackles of humanity in which the human being has wronged them themselves and put us into. So who are we? And what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Other than the Quran, we do not know. Because it should not be our business how we're going to do it outside the Quran. It should only be our business how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for us to do it. But once we do that, Allah will give us tawfiq. Allah will give us success, inshaAllah. And we're making dua that had Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam been here today, whatever victories or whatever solutions and resolutions Allah would have given it to him today, he gives it to us. Part of knowing the decree is knowing that Allah is in control of even what did not take place. It did not take place that Rasul was here today and the Quran is being revealed to him over 23 years today. It didn't happen 23 years ago. But had it been done today, what would have been the victories final? We ask Allah to give it to us. Until the day that we meet him, inshallah. May he increase our patience. May he increase our love and tolerance. May he increase our unity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discipline us and educate us and make us for the mission that he gave to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahabas. We have a number of brothers here, Brother Latif and Brother uh, uh, Yusuf is here. Um, they're from the West End, Patasha, the boys. Um, I want to say something because I was telling Ustaz Abu Nura yesterday. And this is for all of the non quote unquote indigenous here in America. We are all one. We come from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Nobody can deny that any of us are not from Adam. So we have to be unified. Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do. Now, when Allah says, Al-A'rabu ashaddu kufran wa nifaqa, that the Arabs are the worst of the disbelievers and of the hypocrites, it does not mean every single Arab. It does not mean the Arab who is educated and has the manners of and educated from Allah. Yeah. An Arab doesn't mean Arab at all. The Bedouin, we know, we get it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I knew it, we know, we get it. It could be Swiss. I know. So, basically, the United States of America here, we understand that it was originally established with these ideologies of Illuminati or whoever. We don't care for that. We want the Islam which liberates the people, not the Islam which keeps us confined and divided and separated in our stuff. So that's why I was telling. I asked the Islam that you practice there and here is the same. He said, no. He said, I don't want any of the Islam, <laughs> Islam that encourage the revolutions <laughs> over here. It's in itself. You want the Islam that's going to keep us enslaved mentally? No. We don't want the Islam that's going to keep us in this, you understand, cycle of colonialism, capital thing, whatever. We don't want that. We want the one that liberates, the one that gave Bilal radiallahu anhu. Now, the honor that he gave to him, to where it didn't matter how much they tortured him, he said, Ahad, 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 Ahad. And this was the cry on Badr. And that's what we indigenous should be all about. We are the only one who can face the real shaitan in this country. We're the only one who can do it. Whomsoever came to the United States for the da'wah, for the effort, for the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're going to be with you. Whomsoever came for anything other than that, we have nothing to do about that. This is all. Inshallah, I hope no 
you understand, no miscommunication in that affair. Because actually, we all have a very important note. Rasulullah said, we have to be in the service of da'wah at all times. If we are here, we should be calling to Islam, living upon the structures in which Islam with the Quran says. We do not have a right to be in a non-Muslim society and not doing our jobs as da'i. We have to. Unless we are here on official Muslim uh, state matters, we have no business just being here. So we have to do our job. We commit ourselves. The masjid yesterday was full packed. Every single day the masjid should be full packed. Most of those people were students 10, 15 years ago. You remember that, right? They now married, some are graduating, they forgot all their Quran. They forgot they don't know what their deen is. And that's a shame. That's a disgrace. This is the type of Islam that keeps people enslaved. And we don't want that one. We want the one that liberates. So, any, I mean, and we have elders here. You know, so anybody have anything they want to throw on that, you know, inshallah, feel free to, you know, I don't mind any any one of us who is not fully in tune, it's been a long night. Uh, you know, the, the Khatm al-Quran was great. I want to remember uh, just one more thing. Back when we were in Tahfi school, my teacher used to lead the Tahajjud prayer. I remember him saying that the most Fortunate people are those who come and they don't have to lead, they don't have to call the Azan. <laughs> they just there to pray the prayer for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward. So inshallah, I hope that's uh, soothing and satisfying. By Allah, we are not supposed to seek for worldly gains. Allah has already made our worldly gains at a set limit. There's nobody who can do anything to increase it or decrease it. We are only supposed to be here to prepare for our akhirah. We're not supposed to be here for worldly, worldly, worldly obsessions. Allah despises those who go after luxurious lifestyles and whatnot. So this we want to make very clear. That's why we don't want it to have any any talk about funds or crowds. Many of people now, you know, they they at places because they're raising funds, or they're at places because the crowd is you know, humongous and a lot of people, or the building just got a new AC and they want to fill it up. That's really not why we are supposed to be involved in that. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Seems like he's falling. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long day. <laughs> it was a long day. <laughs> but you don't have to work tomorrow, you're off. <laughs> <laughs>